Okay, so this easy sounding problem is actually going to confuse a lot of people. Matter of fact, this problem confused myself, and I'll tell you what I mean in just one second, but let me read you the question. So 10 people total are in a room. Each person shakes hands with everyone else. How many total handshakes are there? Now, this particular video is a remake of a uh, video that I did a day or two ago. Effectively, it was the same problem with one exception. So what I said is you walk into a room with 10 people. So if you walk into a room with 10 people, there would be a total of 11 people. And that is not what I was trying to indicate. So that problem was incorrect for the solution and the math. So I apologize for that. And for those of you that uh, reached out and uh, informed me on that, I certainly appreciate it. I make a lot of YouTube videos, and indeed, uh, I will make an error from time to time. I try to limit those, of course, but again, I do appreciate it. So this is a remake of that problem. Okay, so there are 10 total people in a room. Everyone shakes hands with everyone one time. How many total handshakes are there? Now, feel free to use a calculator, but if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through all the steps to solve this problem in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help in learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, we have 10 total people in a room. Everyone shakes hands one time. So how many total handshakes are there? All right, so let's take a look at the solution steps to this problem right now. So one approach to uh, solving this problem is to try to look for patterns. So we have 10 people here that are going to shake uh, hands one time. But let's uh, consider a simplified version of this problem and see if we can detect any patterns. So what if there was only two people in the room? Well, how many uh, handshakes are going to happen if there's only two people in the room? Well, of course, only one handshake, right? So this person uh, can shake hands with this person or this person can shake hands with this person. The order really doesn't make a difference. There will be just only one handshake. All right, so two people in the room led to one handshake. So let's consider now three people in a room. So if you have three people in a room, well, this person and this person and this person, well, they can maybe shake hands first, and then this person can shake hands with this person. So there's uh, two handshakes. Now, it doesn't make a difference if this person shakes hands with that person, or it kind of started this way. And then lastly, these two people right here can shake and again, order doesn't make a difference, but here there are three total handshakes. So when you have three people, we have three handshakes. Now, kind of going back up here, when we had two people, we had one handshake. So we're looking for patterns here, and it doesn't look uh, like we have some sort of consistent pattern. But uh, let's take a look at what happens when there's four people in a room. So when there's four people in a room, there will, there will be six handshakes. So again, even if you don't know the actual mathematical way to solve this problem, you could just consider little examples like this and look for patterns. Now, of course, you can draw out 10 little stick figures and count up the total handshakes. And that is one approach, but that's a very arduous approach. But uh, again, if there's four people, we can have uh, handshakes here. So that's one. Here's two, there's three, there's four, and then these two people crosswise diagonal will shake. So we have six handshakes with four people in a room. So again, you can draw out 10 little stick figures and count up all the handshakes, but you may not be confident in your answer. You might think to yourself, well, maybe I missed something. Well, the type of problem that we're dealing with here in mathematics is called a counting problem. We're trying to figure out how many combinations or count how many combinations of handshakes will happen when there's 10 people in a room. But in mathematics, when you have a counting problem, you need to consider uh, the order in which things happen. All right. So when counting the way things happen, 
order needs to be considered because there's two types of counting problems. There's something called a combination, and then there's something called a permutation. So if you never heard of this, I'm going to give you a quick crash course on the mathematics, and it's not that difficult. So uh, you might see some crazy looking notation here. Don't worry about it. This is quite easy, but we're going to use this math to actually solve this problem. So when we're trying to count the number of ways something happened, we need to consider whether the order is important or the order is not important. Now, I'm going to show you examples of this uh, in just one second, but if the order is not important, we have a combination, and if the order is important, we have a permutation. Now, let's just kind of consider our handshake problem here. So when we had three people, uh, you could see that the order was not important in terms of the way uh, they shake hands, right? Because we'll still add up the same number of combinations. In other words, order is not important. So we are dealing with a combination in our particular problem. But let me give you uh, some examples of a permutation and a combination as this is very, very easy to confuse. So let's consider a permutation, something where the order of the things that we're trying to count is important. So I'm going to show you some examples, uh, more examples of combinations here as well. But uh, let's consider permutations. So let's suppose we had this problem. How many ways can we line up six people? Okay, well, in that case, order is important, right? So we have person number one, person number two, person number three, et cetera, et cetera. So we have to consider order. Or how about this problem right here? How many phone numbers can you make with three, five, seven, eight, and nine? Obviously, order is going to be important. So these are examples of permutations. Now, how about over here, this particular question, how many ways can you be dealt a card of an ace, king, queen, and jack? So if you have this hand here, it doesn't make a difference if you get the ace first, uh, the jack, and then the king or the queen, or maybe the jack, the queen, and then the ace, and the king. Order doesn't make a difference to get that hand. So you have to be very, very aware whether you're dealing with a combination or a permutation to solve problems. Now, in this particular case, again, we're dealing with the combination. So once we know that, we need to consider the formula for a combination, and here it is. So this might look like sophisticated mathematics, but it's actually not that difficult. So in math, when we have a combination, we write that uh, the notation for that is this. Well, there's actually a few different types of notation, but it's NCK. And we're going to calculate the number of combinations given n objects taken k at a time. So in our problem, we have 10 people and we're taking two people at a time, right? So a handshake is where one person shakes hands with another person. So out of the 10 people in a room, we're looking at how many two um, two-person combinations happen, right? So you can kind of think of it that way. So this is the formula that we're going to use. And matter of fact, let me show you the actual formula now. It's going to seem a little crazy, but it's not that difficult. And believe me, if you uh, never seen this, uh, don't be afraid of it. Okay, so here is the formula for a combination. So NCK uh, is equal to N factorial. All right, so I'll explain this here in just one second over n minus k in parentheses factorial times k factorial. All right, so what is factorial? What's this crazy little uh, notation here, this exclamation mark? Now, I always kind of like to kid around uh, and say, this is not um, saying the number five really loud, like five screaming it. <laughs> That's not what that means in math. So factorial, it's a real easy concept. So five factorial is equal to the way we're going to figure this out, we're going to start with this number here, 5, and then we're just going to count down by 1 and then find the total product. So it's going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That is what 5 factorial is. So another example, if I wanted to calculate 3 factorial, real easy, that's just 3 times 2 times 1. That's all factorial is. And then by definition, 0 factorial is equal to 1. So what we're going to do here is uh, plug in the numbers where n is the total number of objects we have. In this case, we have 10 people, and our k is going to be 
the number of uh, objects we're going to take at that one time. So let's just kind of go back up here. So again, the combination NCK, the number of combinations of N objects taken K at a time. All right, so we're going to take two people at a time. So if you want to try to figure this out, maybe pause the video and plug all these numbers in to this little formula, you will get the right answer. Of course, I'm going to walk through these steps in just one second. Before I show you the rest of the solution, take a quick second to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. This really does help me out on YouTube. Also, if you really want to learn math from me, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. All right, so now that we know something about permutations and combinations, and we realize that we're dealing with a counting problem, we can kind of consider is order going to uh, be important in answering this question. And if you kind of do some examples of two and three people shaking hands, we can see that order is not important. So we are dealing with uh, a combination. So we have 10 people and a handshake is just going to be two people, right? So our N is going to be 10 and our K is going to be two. All right, so again, let's plug in these numbers into this lovely formula. And don't let this intimidate you. The math is actually not that difficult. So we have NCK is equal to N factorial over N minus K factorial times K factorial. Here are uh, the values. Actually, this should be a K. See, I caught that little error right there. So K is equal to 2. All right, so let's go ahead and do this number crunching right now. So here we go. So we have NCK. So again, N is uh, 10. So everywhere we see an N, we're going to plug in a 10. And then everywhere we see a K, we'll plug in a 2. All right, so here is that setup right here. So this is going to be 10 factorial over 10 minus 2 in parentheses factorial times 2 factorial. Okay, so if you have a calculator, by the way, uh, you can plug this in. You have to have at least a scientific calculator, but you do have a function where you can just simply plug this in. But the actual math is not that difficult. All right, so 10 factorial over 10 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. So remember, 10 factorial is what? Well, that means take 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, and this goes on and on and on. But at this uh, point right here, let's just consider what this is. This is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. This right here, this entire thing, is actually 8 factorial. So 10 factorial is equal to 10 times 9 times 8 factorial. So you want to write it this way. So again, 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 factorial. And the reason we want to think of it this way is because down here in the denominator, we have 10 minus 2 factorial. Of course, 10 minus 2 is 8 factorial. So we have 8 factorial down here in the denominator and also 8 factorial up in the numerator. And this is going to make the math super easy because we can actually cross cancel these two factorials, right? So 8 factorial can cross cancel with this 8 factorial. So we're uh, left with, excuse me, uh, 10 times 9, which of course is 90 over 2 factorial, and that's just 2 times 1 or 2. So 90 divided by 2, of course, is 45. So the correct answer here is 45 handshakes. All right, so if you got that right, well, that is fantastic. I got to give you a nice little happy face and an A+. Plus. And uh, matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I would just say take the rest of the year off. I don't know how you're uh, getting so good at math. You're probably watching that guy on YouTube. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.